What's up guys? Today I have for you my solo easter egg guide for the Darkest Shore. It took a while, sorry, I mainly focused on the character challenges, but now I have for you a few tips for this easter egg. And I hope this guide will help you. Let's begin with your loadout. I use Frontline for my special ability, as well as Vicious, Determination and Fully Loaded for my mods. And of course the 1911 for my starting weapon. And you also absolutely need to equip sticky grenades because you will need them for the easter egg. Alright, now listen. My goal for the easter egg was to get to the boss fight as soon as possible. If you can do it before round 20, it's a lot easier to defeat the Meuchler bosses. On the early rounds, your pack a bunch 1911, the bacon and eggs are pretty useful. Even for the boss fight. That's why I put on fully loaded, more ammo, more destruction. However, you should really use the M1A1 carbine for the easter egg. You can buy it in the starting room on the beach. Go and pack a punch it. I'm telling you, it's better than the SVT pack a punched. The carbine has more ammo in the clip and does a large amount of damage. So use it and if you can, put on attachments like extended max, reflex sight and steady aim. Alright, so that's your setup. For the rest of this guide, I advise you to know the basic easter egg. What I mean by that is, I will not explain every step in detail. For example, the spawn locations for the nerfless stones. Just look that up. Anyways, let's begin. Your main goal for the first 5 rounds is to make as much points as possible. You should get some drops like insta kills and double points, so definitely stay in the starting room. I stayed there until to the end of round 5, when you have one last pest zombie. Go and buy the door. To stay in the starting room is very important, because as soon as you leave, you will get fog and that means you will get more zombies. So if you don't have enough points, you can kill the fog zombies. But it's also very important that you buy the cheapest doors because you need to build the wonder weapon and turn on power. So this is your way after you leave the spawn. First door, second door, door in the bunker, then turn on power and go back, go up and open the door to the stamina up, open the door next to stamina up, and then open the door to the artillery bunker. In this room, turn on the power and get the wonder weapon part. After that, go and run down to the bunker again, and then go up to pack a bunch and take the second weapon part right here. After that, go ahead and build the saw weapon. Like I said, if you don't have enough points, kill the fox zombies. But if you can buy it and you still have zombies, you can try to get a zombie spine. Alright, your next goal is to fill up the saw table and to get a lot of points for pack a punch. Just melee the zombies with your saw weapon. And as soon as the saw is ready and filled up, buy it and then get the head from the hanging body. And then you can place the head on a corpse gate. For your efficiency, my tip is to kill a few zombies near the gate but not enough to start the lockdown. This way you can get points and charge the door at the same time. At this point you can also start to open the battery walls with your grenades. You can also try to get the first nerfless stone. Just shoot with the ripsaw at the rocks and find him. But try to get enough points for pack a punch. And as soon as you have enough points, go and pack a punch the 1911. Now you can start the lockdown. For the lockdown, I advise you to train the zombies and not kill them. Yes, I know, it's easier said than done, but with enough practice, you will get used to the lockdown sequence. Turn off the free switches and only kill the zombies if you are turning them off. Just press the button, turn around and then shoot your bacon and eggs. After that, open the corpse gate and kill the burner. At this point, you are ready to do a lot of things. First, I recommend that you use this flag cannon and shoot down the planes as well as this rock. So you can get your second nervous stone. And for your last son of nervous, you need a zombie spine. So try to get one as soon as you can. If you haven't already, go to the secret room and place the first two stones and pick up the monk head. Put the monk in the corpse gate room and give him a zombie spine. Now you have to escort a zombie to the beach. Try to distract the other zombies so he does not get stuck somewhere. After you have your third son of nervous, go and put it in. For the next round, try to get a pest zombie spine. Do the pest sacrifice, so shoot with the upgraded saw from the right angle at the pest zombie. Try to do this at the end of the round, but let some of the zombies alive, not only one. Because if you shoot the saw, there's a chance that you will kill the other zombies. And if you have enough zombies, some of them will die and some of them will get stunned for a while. Don't worry, your pest zombie will not die because of the others, as long as you keep hitting the battery wars and the pest zombie. After you are done, you can do the sacrifice in the nervous room. Go in there and kill all the pest zombies. After that, the door will open again and you can leave. You can also pick up the head and place it if you want to. 
or you could do it later. Now your goal is to get a Wurstling or Meuchler spine. I would go for the Wurstling spine. Rip it out, place it and kill all the zombies except a few. And try to guide those remaining zombies to the Wurstling. You will see that a few will attack him, that's your goal. Kill the ones that attack you and let the others alive. Guide the Wurstling first to double tap, then to melee perk, then to stamina up and then finally to quick revive. If the Wurstling wants to go in a different direction, shoot at him and he will run to you again. Like I said, let the zombie bite him as long as you can. One zombie does not kill him. After he gets all the perks, you can start the sacrifice. Kill all the Wurstlings and you are done. Here's a quick side note. If you want or need to, you can use frontline with your triple damage for this sacrifice. I try to avoid using it as long as I can because it takes more and more kills to activate it again. So I only use it for the Meuchler sacrifice and the boss fight, but do whatever you want. But yeah, if you are at the beginning of a round, do the battery bomber step. Escort him to the artillery cannon and don't let him die. Nothing too difficult. And after that, you can build the radio and shoot the ships. Obviously, fill up the battery and let one zombie alive. And look up a guide for the ship locations. This will make it a lot easier. After that, try to get a Meuchler spine. So go in the nervous room and wait. Train your last zombie in the room. After a minute or something, a Meuchler will spawn. And after two minutes, a second one will spawn. So be fast. Shoot at least two clips of your carbine into his head and try to get the spine. If he lies on the ground, get your charge attack ready for the next attack. Ripping Meuchler spines out takes a bit of practice. So don't worry, the first few times are probably a bit hectic. If you have one, place it down and shoot the Meuchler in the fork. You need to find him three times and defend him from the evil Meuchlers. So basically, you have to find him pretty fast and shoot him. And then you are ready for the sacrifice. Go in there, frontline, his head, press a button to exit the room, done. For the last sacrifice, you need to place all three heads in a room and take the monk's head. And then you have to place the monk's head. So basically, you have to get kills in the blood in front of the nervous god. Just shoot your bacon and eggs and after that pick up the pommel. It's not too difficult. And throw the pommel at the radio. Now you are ready for the boss fight. At this point you have to get set up. Armor, ammo, guns and perks. You can also spin the box for checking the boxes. I think they are better than the pommel for the boss fight. But you can do it without them. By the way, I'm not sure but I think if you spin the box now for the first time you get a higher chance for checking the boxes. So don't spin the box on round 4 to get them, otherwise you have to give them away. Spin the box on round 17 or before you start a boss fight, so you have a higher chance to get them. Now you are ready. For the first stage of the boss fight, shoot and use jacks and frontline. Be aggressive. Always be aggressive. The carbine is your friend. If you have consumables, use them. The longer you take, the harder it gets. But I would save the overcharged consumable in case I do get down. So when you get up, you can get your armor back. For the second stage, activate frontline as soon as the burner spawns. Aim at his head and after you kill him, go and throw jacks. Try to dodge the fire. Jump over the edges of the fire and use frontline. This fight is really the hardest one. If you need self revives and consumables, use them. And always use the 1911 to not get stuck. They also do a lot of damage on the boss zombies. But if you can survive it, great, only two more to go. By the way, after you have killed the Meuchlers in a fire pit, you can go up and get a free drop and buy armor. And always try to fill up your special ability before you go to the next stage. For the third stage, buy armor as soon as you need it. Let the boss zombies spawn, throw a jack in the box and pop frontline. Be aggressive and never stop moving, never. For your final stage, use everything you have, frontline, consumables and jack in the boxes. As you can see, in my gameplay it was a mess, a lot of downs and kills, but in the end I got it. This easter egg is for sure very difficult, but it was a lot of fun to beat it. It's definitely harder than the final Reich's easter egg, but if you want to, do it, go for it. So I hope this was helpful. I think I explained everything. Let me know if you have any questions. But yeah, thanks for watching and I see you next time.